Greetings, everyone. It's time for Stratomatic Baseball. What is this, Thursday afternoon? And welcome, Kenyon Gray. Good to see you. Hope your day's going well. Uh, we've got a ball game today, the second of a four-game series between Boston and Minnesota. Boston at Minnesota, more specifically, May the 7th, 66. It was a Saturday. I would assume they're going to have a doubleheader on Sunday to make that a four-game series. Haven't looked ahead that far, but that would be my guess. Jerry Stevenson, kind of a rough card for Stevenson. And Camilo Pascual, not one of his better years either. Pascal or Pascual? Pascal, Camilo Pascal. Not sure about that one. Anyway, let's see what they've done in the replay. Stevenson's made four starts. He's one and two with a 3.92 ERA, so he's done pretty well. One complete game. Pascal in four starts, one and two, but with a brilliant 2.67 ERA. He's got one complete game. It was a shutout. 30 innings pitched for Stevenson, 21. A couple other notes. I've got a, a maintenance request out on my apartment. So I'm expecting, you know, according to Murphy's Law, I'll probably come to the door while I'm trying to do this game, in which case I'll have to step away from the game and deal with that. It shouldn't take too long. What else we got going in this one? The Twins 11 and 4. They're right in the race. <clears throat> Red Sox 9 and 9. So here's the batting order for the Boston Red Sox. Rico Petroselli will lead off at shortstop. Jim Goskers in center today, batting second. Carly Ostremski, the left fielder, hits third. George Scott in the cleanup spot playing first base. Tony Canigliaro in right field hits fifth. Bob Tillman will do the catching and bat sixth. Joe Foy is down at third base hitting seventh with George Smith at second base batting eighth and Stevenson, the pitcher, hitting ninth. For the Twins, Earl Batty will catch Pascal. Don Mincher at first. Allen and Versailles up the middle. Harmon Killebrew at third. Ted Ulander will be in left field today with Cesar Tovar in center and Tony Oliva in right. And with that, we're about ready to get this one going. Pascal has completed his warm-ups. Well, the other thing I'd like to apologize for in advance is my anxiety today started the day at, at a 9 on a scale of 10. I had some weird, woke up weird. I took some medication, but I just want to apologize in advance for that. If I sound a little off kilter today, that's probably why. So here's Petroselli now. He comes into the game hitting 290. Three home runs and nine runs batted in. One of the first true power hitting shortstops. Remember, he hit 40, was it 40 home runs or 45? 40 home runs in 1969, which was unheard of for a shortstop. Here's Pascal now. He gets the sign from Batty. Victor Rico is a 5'11 right-handed. That's a base hit into right field. So Petroselli starts off with a leadoff single, and we are underway. Rico, not a threat to steal. And here's Jim Gosker now. Gosker just 7 for 31, hitting 226. One homer, four RBIs. Left-handed batter, Pascal from the stretch. Now. That's going to be a 2-8. That's a grounder to shortstop. That's going to be Versailles. Throws to Allen, a 2 mincher not in time. That will go as a force play. So a 6-4 force. Gosker's aboard. And with one away, Carl Yastrzemski will come to bat. Oh, that's interesting, Kenyon. Thank you for that. Pascal had a great curveball. I didn't know that. I know of him only from reading about him. And welcome to Franklin. Franklin made it to Minnesota. So here is Yaz now. Yastrzemski hitting 261. Three home runs and one of three Red Sox with a dozen RBIs. Scott and Conigliaro, the other two. 
Not that surprising since they're batting in the heart of the order. That's kind of what you would expect, although it doesn't always work out that way, of course. So here's Jastrzemski, man on first, from the start. 110, it's a single up the middle. Single in the center field, an open single. Petroselli rounding, 11, Tovar, a minus 110. He will hold up. Sorry, that's Gosker, excuse me. Gosker's on first. 14 minus 113, one out. He's going to go for it. Here's the throw. He's out. Oh, my God. That's what happens if I try to advance. Oh, my goodness. Single, Yastrzemski, Gosker. Forced at third, Yastrzemski will take second on the throw. So a fine throw by Tovar to nail Gosker trying to stretch it. And Yastrzemski on second, two down, and here's George Scott. Scott hitting 254, six home runs to lead the ball club, 12 RBIs. Pascal the windup man. Here's the pitch to Scott on a 4-6. A grounder to shortstop routine for Versailles. Throws to Mincher. And that will retire the side. So no runs on two hits. Red Sox kind of maybe ran themselves out of an inning there. And we are scoreless as we move to the bottom of the first. We'll get you the Minnesota lineup here as Stevenson gets loose. Versailles at short, leading off. Ted Ulander in left field today in the two spot. Tony Oliva, of course, bats third and plays right field. Don Mitcher in the cleanup spot at first base. Harmon Killebrew bats fifth today, the third baseman. Bernie Allen in the sixth spot. Tovar playing center field, hits seventh. Earl Batty, the catcher, bats eighth. Pasquale bats ninth. For Boston, it'll be Tillman doing the catching. Scott, Smith, Petroselli, and Foy around the infield. Yastrzemski, Gosker, and Canigliaro left to right in the outfield. And welcome to Ben. Absolutely, Kenyon, and that gets everybody out. As Bobby Bragan would say, that'll get him out all day long. So here's Versailles to lead things off. Let's check his numbers now. He's hitting just 185. No home runs, four runs batted in. Stevenson gets his sign. Here's the pitch to Zoilo. It's a 4-5, swung on and missed strike three. And with one away, it'll be Ted Ulander batting. Ulander hasn't played much. He's 0 for 5 on the season. He's been sorry, he's 0 for 3 on the season. He's been in five games. He scored a run, most likely as a pinch runner defensive replacement. So Ulander getting his first start and looking for his first hit. And here is the pitch from Stevenson. It's a 3-7 fly ball into center, playable for Gosker. He's there, and there's two down. And here's Tony Oliva. Oliva hitting 268, two home runs, eight RBIs. Two down, nobody on. Just getting started here. And here's the pitch from Stevenson on a 2-8. Pops him up. Right side, Scott calling for it. He'll take it for the out, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Jerry Stevenson. So just like that, one inning in the books, and we are scoreless. Let me refresh this so I can read all of the comments here. Oh, did I spell it wrong? I probably did, huh? Uh, 
No, it's right. Well, I'm the one who's lost, my friend. And greetings to Mike C. as well. Glad to have you. Pascal getting ready to work the second. Canigliaro will lead things off for the Sox, hitting 250, three home runs, a dozen RBIs. Pascal gets the sign from Batty. Now. Here's the pitch to Tony C. It's a 6 8. That's going to be ripped into the gap in left center. That's going to roll to the wall. Canigliaro rounding. He's into second with a stand up double. So a lead off double by Tony C. Third hit for the Red Sox already. And here's Bob Tillman, the catcher. Tillman comes in leading the club in batting at 375, if you can believe that. He's 12 for 32. No home runs, but seven RBIs. Trying to pick one up here. Pascal gets the sign. Pitch to Tillman, a 2-4. He pops him up. Infield fly rule as Versailles makes the catch, and there's one down. And here's Foy now. Foy batting 310 on the season, three homers, five RBIs. The Red Sox have 23 home runs as a team, which would rank among the league leaders in the team stats. Minnesota, by contrast, has just 14. Batting average is about the same, 244 for the Red Sox, 247 for the Twins. Pascal with a pitch to Foy is a 1-3. Base hit into right field. That's going to be an open single. Canigliaro rounding. He's a 13. Oliva, however, with a minus 2 gun makes him an 11, and he will hold up. So Tony C. holds at third base on the single by Foy. I tell you, I'm really frazzled by this crowd noise. First it's loud. Then it's dead quiet. Okay, first and third, one down. Foy, no threat to run. And here's George Smith, the second baseman. Smith comes in at 267, two home runs, eight RBIs. And here's the pitch to Smith. Infield at double play depth, of course. 4-2 is going to be a fly ball into left field fairly deep. Ulander backing up to make the catch. Canigliero will tag up and score. And the Red Sox take the lead. So a sacrifice fly to left. That'll be an RBI for Smith. And it's one to nothing. And here's the pitcher, Stevenson. Stevenson, a left-handed hitter. One W. And the pitcher, Camilo. Two, three. Foul ball behind the plate. That's going to be Batty to handle it. And that retires the side. So one run, two hits, one left on. And it's one to nothing, Red Sox. As we go to the bottom of the second inning. Just getting underway, folks. Pull up a chair and hang out with me for an hour or so. Again, I should point out that we could be interrupted. I have a maintenance call out for my apartment. And according to Murphy's Law, they always show up while I'm doing a game. Stevenson getting ready to go now. It's going to be Mitcher, Killebrew, and Allen for the Twins. Mitcher comes in at 275. He leads the ball club in homers with five, and he has 11 RBIs. So Stevenson into the windup. Pitch to Don Mincher is a 4 5 left handed. It swung on and missed strike three, and down goes Mincher. So Stevenson off to a good start. And here's Killebrew. Harmon Killebrew at 315, two homers, 10 RBIs. And here's the pitch to Harmon. It's going to be a 1 8, and he draws the walk. 
So ball four, a one-out walk to Killebrew. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's Bernie Allen. Allen, the left-handed hitting second baseman. Hitting 281, no homers, seven ribbies. Stevenson from the stretch now, delivering to Christian Allen on a 5-9 left-handed. That's going to be a high fly ball to deep right field. That's into the corner, Conigliaro chasing it down. Here comes Killebrew rounding. They're going to send him home. The throw, he's in there, and uh, Allen's in with a triple. So an RBI triple by Bernie Allen ties the game. Killebrew showing off his blazing speed, going from first to home. <laughs> Let's take another look at that one. 5-9, homer to 11, and yes, he does have the power against righties. I was surprised at that myself, but on a 17, it's going to be a triple, and we got a tie of all game. Oh, and you looked him up, Kenyon. Excellent. 170 game winner, over 2,000 Ks. 36 shutouts, can you imagine? We'll never see that again, and he's still alive at age 90. Well, Ben, hopefully nothing serious. Everything okay, I presume, I hope. As Tovar steps to the plate. Tovar, just one for 16 on the season, getting a chance to play in center field today. Boston will pull the infield in with a runner at third and one down. And Stevenson on the wind up. Here's the pitch on a 1-4. A grounder to third, B. Oh, my, with the infield in. I think they've got the lead man. They sure do. It doesn't tell you, uh, how to score it. It's a one, four to third. Grounder to third. Allen tried to come home. Third baseman went to the plate and nipped him. And that'll go as a force play. So a huge play there by Boston. Infield in, saves a run. And here's Earl Batty with two down. Batty comes in at 333, one homer, 12 RBIs, which leads the ball club. Runner on first, two away from the stretch. Batty. It's going to be a 1-7. Right in his good column, it'll be a fly ball in center that will hang up for Gosker. Drifts over and makes the play to retire the side. However, the Twins get a run on a walk and a triple. They leave a man on, and after two innings complete, it's a 1-1 tie. And welcome to Philip Reynolds. Yeah, in addition to waking up highly anxious today, now I've got this looming over my head that somebody's going to be knocking on the door at any second as I have a maintenance call out. Oh, outstanding, Philip. What's that? Mike C. is enjoying Out of the Park. A lot of games, 72 and 93 Phillies. Strat's been on hold recently. I may have to check out this out of the park. It seems to be attracting a lot of Strat players. Oh, that's wonderful, Philip. Congratulations. In August, Philip Reynolds will be married for the second time in August. Well, I wish you all the best and congratulations. I, uh, I certainly hope it goes better than mine. I've been married twice and uh, 
Now I am not. Pascal getting ready to go to work in the third. Top of the order for the Red Sox, Petroselli, Gosker, and Yastrzemski. Petroselli singled his first time up and was forced. Pascal the side, the wind up, the pitch to Rico, 3-9, swung on and missed strike three. And down goes Petroselli. The first K of the game for Pascal. And here's Gosker now. Gosker 0 for 1. Sorry about that technology again. It's a conspiracy today to drive me insane. I can see that already. <laughs> here's the pitch to Gosker. 4-12 to the lefty. Fly ball to right fairly deep. Backing up is Oliva on the track and makes the catch two down. And here comes Yastrzemski now. Yastrzemski singled his first time up. Pascal in the windup, and the pitch is a 5-7 to the left-hander. That's going to be a double to 5 on a 15. He'll settle for a long single, and Yaz is 2 for 2. Yastrzemski, a star 15 stealer to boot. Let's check the battery. Pascal, a poor hole to plus four. Catcher batty is zero, so he'd be a 19 not held. He will have to be held, making him a 17. He does have that eight automatic caught, though, which will deter him from trying for the lead. With two outs, George Scott will swing away. From the stretch now, a 3-8 high, high fly ball to deep left field. Ulander going back to the track to the wall. It's gone. Home run, George Scott. Oh, my goodness. A little delayed bat sound there. Trying that out. And let's check Scott now. I believe that's his fifth or sixth home run. I'm sorry, that's his seventh home run of the season. Fascinating, Mike. And Philip got rid of all of his strat. Well, that's sad. <laughs> no, a two-run homer by Scott puts the Sox up three to one. And here's Tony C. Pascal gets the sign now. Here's the pitch to Tony. It's going to be a 1-9 fly ball into left field. That's playable for Ulander. He's under it and makes the catch to retire the side. But two big runs for the Red Sox here on two hits. A two-run blast by George Scott. His seventh home run of the year. That gets him very high in the league leaders. Let's take a look at that. Go into the league stats here. League leaders, home runs. That ties him with Jackie Warner for seven, for second with seven home runs. Just one back of league leader Boog Powell, who has eight. When Philip likes HMB and H, I don't know what those are. Somebody will have to explain that. Stevenson now staked to a two-run lead. Gets ready to work in the bottom of the third. Pascal will lead it off. He's a right-handed batter, 3-W. Stevenson into the windup. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a 2-5. Swung on and missed strike three. And that's the third K for Jerry Stevenson. Back to the top of the order now, and Zoilo with one down. Zoilo fanned in the first. Stevenson the 
wind up on the pitch. It's a 3-4 to Zoilo. Fly ball into center field. That's playable for Gosker. Takes a few steps back and puts it away two down. So History Maker. Gotcha. History Maker Baseball and History Maker Baseball Express. And Ben... Boy, I can't recommend that enough, Ben. I, I, I think you'll be happy with the computer game. Here's Ulander now, 0 for 2. I'm sorry, 0 for 1, two outs in the inning. Stevenson lined up on the pitch. That's a 2-9 right-handed. High fly ball to deep right field. Backing up is Canigliaro. Now he's at the track. He leaps at the wall, and it's gone. Ted Ulander with a two-out home run. Let's look at that one again. 2-9 righty. Homer to 4. The roll is a 2. And for you, Lander, that's the, not only his first home run of the season, that's his first hit of the season, and it's a 3-2 ball game. Boy, did he pick a good time to get his first hit of the year and a home run to boot. And here's Tony Oliva. Tony O, 0 for 1. Stevenson gets his sign now. The line pitch to Oliva on a 2-5. It's a tapper down to first base. Scott gloves it. He'll take it to the bag himself. And that will do it. But one run on the Ulander homer. And we're through three here in a 3-2 ball game. This game could provide a little more offense than we've been used to recently, fellas. Last two games have gone extra innings, of course. And we move along to the fourth inning. Bob Tillman will lead it off. Tillman popped a short his first time up today. Cap Pascal, the sign from Batty. Takes the wind up in the pitch on a 6-12 right. It's a grounder to first base X. That's going to be Mincher. Mincher, a 3-E-12. And here's the roll on the play. On a 2, he's not going to get that. That's down for a base hit. So a leadoff single for Tillman. And that'll bring up Joe Foy. Foy, who singled his first time up. Standing in from the right side now. Pascal working out of the stretch. Here's the pitch to Foy. It's going to be a 6-8 right-handed. That's ripped deep to center field. Going back is Tovar. Still going back. It's over his head. Gathers it up. Tillman will hold up at third on a double by Joe Foy. And the Sox are in business in the fourth. Second and third, nobody out. And here's George Smith. Smith knocked in their first run with a sack fly in the second. And the way this game's going, I'm inclined to play the infield back and try to stay out of the big inning. Kind of anticipating there's going to be more scoring here today. So here's Smith now, infield back. Pascal delivers on a 4-6. It's a grounder to shortstop. That's going to be good enough to, let's see, A. Ground ball A, runners forced, runners hold. So the runners will hold in a 6-3 ground out. One away, and here's the pitcher, Stevenson. Let's check his bunting rating. That could affect things. Jerry's a B bunner. Twins are going to pull the infield in, thinking he might try to, well, he wouldn't try to squeeze with Tillman on third. He's slow. A one through nine runner. No, they'll stay back. No chance of a squeeze with Tillman at third. So here's the pitch to Stevenson. On a 2-9, grounder to first base, Mincher. Takes it to the bag himself, and the runners again have to hold. 
So here's Rico Petroselli with two down now. Second and third, nobody out, and now they're still there with two down. Pascal staring in, trying to get out of this now. The pitch to Rico is a 4-8. Single up the middle. Two stars. Here comes Tillman to score. Here comes Foy to score. And it's a two RBI single for Rico Petroselli. And it's five to two. Pascal, a six endurance starter. He's been knocked around here today. Remember, he came into the game with a 2.67 earned run average. And here's Jim Gosker. Gosker, 0 for 2. Pascal from the stretch. This is Jim Gosker, a 1-6. Fly ball to right field. That's a can of corn for Tony Oliva. Comes in a few steps, makes the catch, and the side is retired. But two runs for Boston on three hits. They leave one. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. Red Sox leading it 5-2. to two. Remember the Twins at 11-4 and four entered the game just one game behind the Orioles in sec second place in the American League. And it'll be Mincher, Killebrew, and Allen for the Twins. Stevenson 5 rated for endurance. Mincher 0 for 1 struck out his first time up. Stevenson, the wind-up, and the pitch to John Mincher as a 4-7. Single to 6 on a 5. That's knocked down at second by Smith, but he has no play. That's going to go as an infield single, and Mincher's aboard to lead off the bottom of the 4th. Mincher, not a star stealer, but look at that hold on Jerry Stevenson. Plus 9. The catcher, a plus three. That's 12. Well, the most it can be is a five. But that would make Mincher an 18. He needs a six to get it, so they won't hold him. So why not try for it? On a nine, he does not get it. Worth a shot. And here's Killebrew. Killebrew walked his first time up. Stevenson from the stretch. The pitch to Harmon Killebrew is a six, seven. Base hit up the middle. Mincher could go to third. However, a 1 through 10 runner. Gosker, a 0. He will hold up at second. So first and second, nobody out. And here come the Twins. Twins threatening in the bottom of the fourth. They trail by three. First and second, nobody out. And here's Bernie Allen. Bernie tripled in a run in the second. Stevenson gets the side from the stretch. Pitch to Bernie is a 5 5 left handed swung on and missed strike three. Oh man, he just missed, just missed his second triple of the ball game there. And here's Tovar. Tovar 0 for 1. One away from the stretch. Pitch to Caesar. 1 4 is a grounder to third base. Foy will go down to Smith. One out to Scott. Not in time. That's going to be a force. Mitchell will take third, Killebrew forced. And there's runners at the corners and two away for Earl Batty. Batty flew to center his first time up today. Runners take their leads. Stevenson gets the sign from Tillman, and here's the pitch to Batty. That'll be a 2-4 right-handed fly to right field. That's playable for Canigliaro. And that will do it for the Twins in the fourth. No runs, two hits, two left on. We're through four here in Minnesota. It's 5-2 to two Red Sox. So another nice performance from a very horrible card, right? Stevenson's looked very good out there so far today. Pascal, with the far better card, has been knocked around. He's already given up four, six.
six, nine hits in the first four innings. And he'll be facing the heart of the Red Sox order in the fifth. It's Yaz, Scott, and Canigliaro. And welcome to Alex. Yaz is two for two, pair of singles. Pascal, the sign from Batty. Here's the pitch to Yaz on a 4 7 left handed single to four on a 13. That liner's right into the glove of Allen. And there's one down. You know, that's a good question, Franklin. We have to remember the population. Uh, what am I trying to say here? As the population, as far as what the bigger cities were, the landscape was a lot different at that time than it is now. So here's George Scott. Scott with a two-run homer in the third. He's one for two. Seven home runs on the season now. Pascal comes set, and the pitch is a 3-8. It's a high fly ball to deep left field, but that's going to be down into the corner. Ulander, it bounces away from Ulander. Tovar over to pick it up. Scott rounding. He's headed for third. Tovar's throw. He's in there with a triple. So Scott with a homer and a triple. Well, he's got the hard part of the cycle out of the way. <laughs> Does Scott have a triple this season? Let's take a look. He's got seven homers. That's his first triple. Let's take another look at it. On a 3-8, homer to 15. The roll is an 18, and he is in with a triple. One down, Scott on third, and now the Twins will pull the infield in. They don't want to give up any more here. Already trailing by three. Pascal comes set. Pitch to Tony C is going to be a 4-6. It's a grounder to short. Versailles looks back to the runner, throws to Mincher. And that's two down. And here's Bob Tillman now. Tillman one for two. Pascal looks at his runner. Full windup. Pitch to Tillman, a 1-5. Swung on and missed strike three. And Pascal gets out of it. A one-out triple, and he's left stranded there. No runs to hit, one left. And here's Jerry Stevenson. He'll be entering his first inning of potential fatigue in the bottom of the fifth. Not in this replay, Kenyon. I've had cycles, again, in the online game where you play, you know, thousands of games. As far as a cycle with cards and dice, I cannot remember one. That's not to say it never happened. But all the stuff from back in the, my younger day... I don't have any of those score sheets anymore. I kept them for a while, then I started moving around too much, and it just became unnecessary to, to pack so much crap, you know. Here is Pascal to lead it off. Bottom of the fifth, that's kind of a breaking point, isn't it? To pinch hit or not to pinch hit. thinking about this one now. I think it's too early. He's got about one more time. So here's the pitch to Pascal on a 5-6 right-handed. And boy, bat he does. He rips that into the left center gap. That's going to roll to the wall. Gosker picks it up. And how about that? Camilo Pascal is in with a leadoff double. Oh, oh my. 5-6 right-handed. Double to 12, the roll is a three. 
So, so much for pinch hitting for him. <laughs> I doubt if the pinch hitter could have done as well. And here is Versailles. He's 0 for 2. Twins very much in this ball game. 5 to 2 Red Sox right now. Stevenson with the one. Here's the pitch to Zoilo. It's a 6-10 right-handed. Fly ball to center and shallow. Gosker coming in. Still coming. He's there to make the catch. One down. And here comes Ted Ulander. As Kenyon pointed out, <laughs> Ulander had two home runs that season. He has one of them in this ball game. He's one for two. Stevenson gets the sign. Pitch to Ulander on a 1-9. It's a tapper down to first. Scott will take it to the bag. Runner holds. And it'll be up to Tony Oliva. Oliva, the Twins' best player. He's 0 for 2 today. Pop to first, grounded to first. Stevenson gets the side. Tony O on a 5-6 left-handed. That's ripped over the first base bag and down in the corner. Here goes Oliva. He's rounding. Here comes Pascal to score. Oliva's going for third. Canigliaro's throw. He's in there. And that's the third triple of the ball game, the second for the Twins. An RBI triple for Oliva. And for Tony O, that's his second triple. Looking at it again, it's a 5-6 lefty. Clean triple. Holy cow. And now there's action in the Boston pen. One more hitter walk will fatigue Stevenson. Grilly, the left-hander. And who's the right-hander down there with him? It looks like it's Dan Osinski. Runner on third, two away, and Don Mincher will be the batter. Mincher is one for two. Stevenson trying to get out of this now and maintain the lead. The windup. Pitch to Mincher on a 4 4. That's going to be catcher's card X. That's Tillman. Tillman's a 3-E-4. Here's the roll on the play. Will this score a run? On an 18, it sure will. It's a pass ball and foul out. So he indeed gets the last out. But the pass ball allows Oliva to score. So the pass ball charge to Tillman here. And that will be an unearned run against Stevenson. Foul out to the catcher is the third out. So one run, two hits. They leave. No, they left no one. Excuse me. I beg your pardon. And there's Perry and RGL. Welcome, guys. We got all the, the gangs all here. We're missing Joel Horland. I was thinking the other day about Aaron. In the early days, Aaron was always there with trivia and then just kind of disappeared. That happens, I guess, in the YouTube world. Honestly, I'm thankful for you guys. When I started this project, I couldn't imagine anybody would sit and watch me roll dice. It was inconceivable. However, having tried many things to occupy my time in retirement, I figured, okay, let's give it a go, see what happens. But I have to say it's been very rewarding so far. Moving along to the sixth, it's five to three Boston. It'll be the bottom of the order for Boston. That's Foy, Smith, and the pitcher. 
Pascal is six, so he's in his first inning of potential fatigue. Whoops. Oh, goodness. Thank you, Ben. Ben's on top of it. That used to be Joel's job, so I'm glad you're here, Ben. In fact, I should bring this up at this point. That's right. Two runs, two hits. No one left. It's a five to four ball game. Big difference. I was talking to my best friend, Eric, just recently, and I brought up Ben. I said probably one of the most rewarding things of doing this was I actually brought a guy over to Stratomatic. And you old timers know, I mean, hell, we need, we need more players. Well, you know, we're just not out burning the candle at both ends like we did when we were younger, right? <laughs> I tell you, a lot of times after the game, I get something to eat and I take a nap. I'm tired. And it's early in the afternoon still here. So here's Foy. He's two for two, single and a double. Pascal, his first inning of potential fatigue as he goes into his windup. Pitch to Foy on a 6-8 right hand, and that is ripped into left center for a double. Tovar will get it back in, and Foy is in with his second double of the ball game. So the bats are alive today in Minnesota, and here's Smith. Smith 0 for 1, sacrifice fly in the second. Pascal staring in now. Here's the first to Smith. That's going to be a 1-7, and he walks in, ball four. Now Pascal's in trouble, and there's action in the Twins pen. Jim Merritt and Johnny Klipstein throwing down there. And here's the pitcher, Stevenson. Had, had, were Boston trailing in the sixth inning, I would pinch hit for him. Actually, I'm going to pinch hit for him anyway. Just going by the seat of my pants here. You've got a bad card who's an S5. He's already pitched five innings. I say that's good enough. And he was tagged around pretty good today. Two, four, six, nine, ten, eleven hits in five innings. Wait, 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 that's the wrong guy. Gemini, Christmas Steve, get your head in the game. One, two, three, four, five, six hits. Four runs, three earned. He walked only one. He actually pitched a good game. Struck out four. Probably deserves better than to be pulled, but I think this is going to be an offensive game. I mean, it is an offensive game so far. Okay, pitching. Killebrew, Allen, and Tovar do up. They're going to go to Osinski. And right now we'll have a pinch hitter for Stevenson. First and second, nobody out. And that's going to be Dalton Jones. So Jones coming off the bench. He pinch hit in this game in real life. Yeah, I'm thinking bullpen game, Ben, absolutely. First and second infield back. What has Dalton Jones done on the season? I know he hasn't played much. He's just one for 10 with a walk. He's got some Numbers, at least. He's got some on base, some hits against Riot. He's no power to speak of. 
He is an N, however. One more hit or walk will fatigue Pascal. And here's the pitch for Jones. That's going to be a 2-7 fly to center field. That's playable for Tovar. He's got it. Fairly shallow runners will hold. And that's the first out of the inning. And that'll bring up Rico. Rico Petroselli. I'll have to do that, RGL. Let me, in fact, make, I'm going to make a note to myself of that right now because my short term memory being what it is. I'm writing that down right now. RJL Network. 7.30. Is that uh, Eastern or Pacific time? Yeah, definitely, Ben. You'll get there. Don't wish your life away. Uh, take it from me. It's not what it's cracked up to be. Although I'm glad to not be working for that major supermarket chain whose name I will not say here. I think they're all basically the same. You know, I've been out of there for almost, oh, almost 13 years now. And I still feel like I just got out of prison on parole. I'm not kidding you. So here's Rico, first and second, one down, Pascal. Hanging in there. Remember, one more hit or walk fatigues him. And here's the pitch to Rico. It's going to be a 5-8 right-handed. It's a grounder to second X. That could be just what the doctor ordered for Pascal. Allen, a 3-E-22. This could be two. And here's the plug. On an 8, that's the E range. It's a 6 on a 22. And he boots it. Oh, my goodness. Double play ball booted by Allen. And that's huge. Foy to third, Smith to second, and the bases are loaded with one out. That does not count against Pascal's endurance. Be that as it may, here comes Sam Mealy, and he's going to pull him. Two left-handed hitters do up. Good a time as any to bring in Jim Merritt. So here's Merritt. Pascal worked five and a third. It's a bullpen game, my friends. Seven thirty Eastern. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Pascal, two, four, six, nine, ten, eleven hits. He walked only one. Struck out a pair. And here comes Jim Merritt. I never get tired of saying this either. I met Jim Merritt once in Desert Hot Springs, California. A finer gentleman you will never meet. So Merritt getting tuned up. Let's check his stats. Merritt's been in three ball games. He's 1 0 with a save and has not allowed a run in just two and a third innings of work. So he comes in, inherits a very unenviable position. Base is loaded and one out. Gosker at the plate. They'll be at double play depth. Merritt gets the side from Batty. Here's the pitch to Gosker. 1 7. He struck him out. So two away, man, that was a huge out. He 
And here's Yaz. Yaz is two for three with the bases loaded, nowhere to put him. Not that you would anyway with Scott on deck, who's homered and tripled so far. <laughs> Merritt stares in now the pitch to Yastrzemski. That's going to be a 6-4. Lefty fly to right field and shallow. Here comes Oliva still coming. He's there to make the catch to retire the slide. And Merritt gets out of the bases loaded jam. Holy crap, was that some nifty pitching. No runs to hit three left on. There was a walk and an error. It's a 72 World Series between the Royals and the Houston Astros. That's the RJL Network. Game one tonight. That was my first play by mail league. I took the Houston Astros. Unfortunately, the league disbanded before we were hardly into the season. A lot of people, I guess, bit off more than they could chew with all you. Know, we had to get to write out your instructions by hand and then mail them, and yeah, you know, it was it was kind of a hassle. But I really wanted to do it, and it just kind of fizzled out. Of course, I had my local face-to-face -face league, an eight-team league. Anyway, we moved to the bottom, <coughs> excuse me, we moved to the bottom of the sixth. Dan Osinski coming on for the Red Sox. Osinski on the replay has been in six games. He's 0-1 with a save, an ERA of six even in six innings of work. Harmon Killebrew will lead it off. He's walked and singled. Five to four Red Sox. Anybody's game. Oh, I can answer that, Perry. The fielding. It's weird because it's kind of broken up. Okay, here on Zinski, there's the pitcher three. That's his his range factor, and then you've got to go over here for the E0. I always wonder why they don't put that together. It, do, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. But Ozinski's a 3 E0. And, of course, that's his hitting rating. So you could have put the 3 E0 here and moved the hitting rating over a little bit. To me, that would have made more sense. Anyway, that's how they've always done it. So here's Killebrew. Osinski gets the sign. The wind up the pitch to Harmon, 4 7, and he walks him. So it's a leadoff walk to Killebrew, who has not been retired yet today. And him and his blazing speed are on board to lead off the bottom of the sixth. He represents the tying run. And here's Bernie Allen, tripled and struck out so far. Osinski staring in now from the stretch. Pitch to Allen is a 1 8 base hit into center field. Gosker a 0. Kilbrew, however, a 1 through 9 will hold at second. And the Twins are in business in the bottom of the sixth. Here's Tovar now, batty on deck. Tovar has been really terrible with the bat. He's going to lay it down. He's a B. It's a nine, and it's a successful sacrifice bunt for Tovar. So Tovar moves the runners over. On a nine, that will be scored 5-3. Not that it matters. And with one out, second and third. So the tying run on third, the go-ahead run at second base, and here's Earl Batty. Now, you're the Red Sox, you're thinking, put Batty on? Yeah, but they could pinch hit for Merritt. They'll pull the infield in and pitch to Batty. Franklin, I'm going to come back to that because I read something this morning that cracked me up. Second and third infield in, one away. The pitch to Earl Batty is a 2-9. That's a grounder to shortstop. That's going to be Petroselli. Throws him out. And now we do have a bind here. 
I really like to leave Merritt in, but with those runs at second and third and them trailing by a run, they got a hit here. So we'll have a hitter for Merritt. Merritt did a fantastic job getting out of that bases loaded one out jam in the top of the inning. Retired both of his batters, struck out one. All five runs charged to Pascal. Klipstein getting ready to come in. And we'll have a pinch hitter for Merritt. And that's going to be Jimmy Hall, left-handed batter. Now this brings up another set of interesting circumstances. Hall's hitting 410. He's 16 for 39 with three home runs and 10 RBIs. He's played in 13 games, 13 of the 15. Two down. Versailles due up is 0 for 3. You got a right hander on the mound. And Billy Herman's gonna gonna have him put him on. So an intentional walk issued to Jimmy Hall. And the bases are loaded for Zoilo. Better matchup for Ozinski for sure. Zoilo 0 for 3 today. Bases loaded, two down, they trail by one. <clears throat> Here's the pitch to Zoilo. It's a 5-12. It's going to be a grounder to third base X. That's Foy, a 4-E-25. Hold your breath on this one. Here is the play. It's a 17. He makes the play. Throws him out. Fine play by Joe Foy to bail him out. Oh, my goodness. Talk about some tension there. Ozinski wiggles out of it. No runs a hit. The bases left loaded. And we're through six in a five to four ball game. And going back to what you said there, Franklin. It was, uh, I don't know where I read this. Maybe on the MLB website. Part of my morning, you know, check email and uh, check the weather. The morning computer and coffee ritual, I call it. Anyway, <laughs> to the point. Carl Erskine said, I never had any problem pitching to Stan Musial. I just threw my best pitch and then backed up third base. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. And of course, I refer to the recently deceased Carl Erskine. So Osinski... No, wait a minute. Klipstein coming on to pitch for Minnesota. Klipstein's been in four games. He's 2-0 and and is not allowed to run in three and a third innings of work. And welcome Jeffrey and Perry. Yeah, great pick by Scott. Absolutely. And Scott will lead it off. Scott with a homer and a triple. He's in good position. Still awfully hard to do, but he's got the hard ones out of the way, right? Clipstein ready to work now. The sign from Batty. Here's the windup. Pitch to George Scott is a 2-8. He struck him out. So, so much for the cycle. Scott down on strikes, one away. 
And here's Tony C. Canigliaro, one for three with a double today. Clipstein getting his sign. Here's the windup. Pitch to Tony C. That's a 5-3 right-handed. Fly ball into left field X. That's going to be Ulander, a 2-E7. Good defensive outfielder. Ulander ranging to the gap. And here's the play on a four. He leaps and makes an amazing running catch. Holy cow, it's a web jam by Ulander. What a freaking play. So Canigliaro robbed of extra bases on a web jam by Ulander. And with two outs, it's going to be Tillman. Tillman won for three. Clipstein gets the sign from Batty. Here's the pitch to Tillman on a 4-4, a grounder to third X. That'll be Killebrew. Killebrew a 4-E-24. And here's the roll on the play. It's going to be a 10, error range. A 10 on a 24. He makes the play for the out. And that will retire the side on a nice play by Harmon Killebrew. One, two, three, go the Sox in the seventh. As we stretch for the seventh, it is Red Sox five, Twins four. Hell of a ball game. Osinski will come out for his second inning. Or will he? He will not. Herman's going to go to Guido Grilli. How about that? Well, the left-handers do up. Well, since he pitched his inning... He walked two, one of them intentionally. No strikes out, no strikeouts, excuse me. And here's Grilly. Guido Grilly, a lefty, computer only card. He did pitch in this game in real life. He has not been used yet this year. And he won't be used much, quite frankly. Let's see how much he actually pitched. Well, he worked 20 innings. In fact, he wound up on Kansas City by year's end, so he wasn't with Boston long. Okay, it's Grilly against Ulander. Might the Twins swap for Ulander? They've got another good left fielder who bats from the right side. Trailing by a run, that's what they're going to do. They're going to counter with Joe Nosek. So all kinds of wheels turning in this one. Nosek is a 2E7 plus 1, so the same defensive rating as Ulander, one worse on the throwing arm. Nosek in the replay so far. He hasn't played much either. He's just 0 for 1. He's been in two games. So getting a chance here is Nosek, and also getting a chance is Grilly. And some good information from Kenyon there on Guido. He only pitched in 66 and is still alive at 85 and can't drive 55. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. Okay, righty on lefty here now. The left-hander winds and deals. Fish to Nasek of 5'8". A grounder to second base X. That is going to be a Smith... Smith, a fine second baseman, 2E28 as he ranges behind the bag. 
lose the play on a one. He's not going to get that one. He knocks it down, gets up. He has no throw. That's going to go as an infield single for Nasik. So Nasik aboard to, to lead off the bottom of the seventh, representing the tying run. And he's a star 15. Grilly a zero hold. Batty a zero. So Nasik a 15 will be held on. And that'll make him a 1 to 13. And here's Tony Oliva now, right hander. Let's see now. Bucky Brandon getting loose in the Sox pen. And thank you for that, Mike. Yeah, in fact, if we looked at the card, right? Kansas City. Is that when... Uh, well, no, Grilly went from Boston to Kansas City. Kansas City, I can tell you this much. At some point in the season, they jettison like a third of their roster gets moved. It's crazy. So I've got it all written down somewhere. Actually, it's on a word document on my uh, laptop. So here's a lever, runner at first, nobody out. Tony O, one for three, a triple. The left-hander Grilly staring in. Here's the fish to Oliva on a one-two. It's a high fly ball to deep right field. Canigliaro back to the track, to the wall. It's gone. And how about that? Coney Tony Canigliaro has just put the twins in front with a dramatic two-run home run in the bottom of the seventh. Oh, my goodness. And just listen to that crowd. Yes, Ben, I mean Oliva. And Tony O, let's take a look at it. Holy cow, 1-2 against a lefty, 1-13 homer, it's a 9. And oh my goodness, his teammates greet him as he crosses the plate. And it's 6-5 to five twins. For Tony Oliva, that is his third home run of the season. <laughs> exactly, Kedjan. Well, it seemed to be the move. Um, Brandon's ready. Really, he's going to pitch to the left-handed Mincher. And then that'll be it for him. Here's the pitch to Mincher now, a 1-3 comebacker. Grilly has it, throws him out. And here comes Herman, and he's going to go to the righty. Harmon Killebrew due up. Allen to follow, and then Tovar. So they'll go to Bucky Brandon here. Fourth pitcher of the day for the Red Sox. Really, a third of an inning, two hits, two runs. Brandon, a pretty good card. Starter reliever. Let's see what he's done in the replay so far. He's been in six games, 0-2 with a 7.71 ERA across seven innings of work. Six to five, anybody's game. Nobody on, and there's one away, and here's Killebrew, who has not been retired today, singled in the fourth and walked twice. Bucky Brandon's ready to work now, and here's the pitch to Harlan Killebrew on a 3-2 base hit up the middle. And Killebrew still has not been retired today. Two for two with a pair of walks. And here's Bernie Allen now.
Allen, two for three. Brandon now working out of a stretch. Six to five ball game here. There's the pitch. That's going to be a 6-10 to the left-hander. Fly to right and shallow. Canigliaro coming in to make the play, and there's two away. And here comes Cesar Tovar. Tovar 0 for 2. Brandon staring in now. Here's the pitch. 3-9 righty. Grounder to short. Petroselli has it. Goes the short way to Smith. And that will retire the side, but two big runs on a two-run blast by Tony O. And after seven complete here in Minnesota, it is Twins six, Red Sox five. Holy crap, what a game. Checking Minnesota's bench now. Looking for anybody who can play defense. Allison's not bad, but he's a step down from Nasek, so they are about as good as they're going to be. Clipstein will take the mound in the eighth. Closer Al Worthington begins to loosen. Yes, Mike, what is the trade? Oh, that's when Sanders went. Oh, my God, and the, Roy uh, the, the Royals. The Athletics are really going to be a mess once they lose uh, Tartable. Holy crap. He's their best hitter so far. <laughs> so Klipstein, beginning his second inning of work, he's two rated for endurance. Red Sox will send up the bottom of the order in the eighth inning. That's going to be Foy, Smith, and the pitcher's spot. I should have double switched with Brandon. Did it again. Foy's three for three. Two doubles and a single. Klipstein gets the sign from Batty now. Here's the wind up to pitch to Foy on a 1-8. It's a high fly ball to deep left field. Backing up his u ladder at the track. Leaps. It's gone. Joe Foy with the home run has just tied this game up, and he's four for four with three extra base hits. Holy cow. He threw it in there and pop. There's the bat sound. I was trying to incorporate that. <laughs> For Joe Foy, his fourth home run of the season. And this looks like whoever scores last wins. That's the type of game we got here today. And here's Smith. Smith 0 for 1, walk and a sack fly. The pitch from Clifstein. It's a 2 6 right handed, swung on and missed strike three. So down goes Smith. Tie game. Let's look at this carefully now. You've got Brandon in a tie game, left in the pen. They've still got Sanders. Raditz, Longberg, Bennett from the left side. Yeah, they got plenty, so they're going to hit. They've still got some bench options. Let's see who they would bring in against the righty. Mostly right-handers. Sanders and Lonborg throwing. Sanders is on my mind now since reading about the trade. Okay, one away and we need a batter. Against Clipstein. It'll be George Thomas for the Red Sox.
Thomas a nice 333 on base in real life. In the replay, he's hitting 286. He has one home run. Clipstein set to go now. Here's the pitch to Thomas. On a 1-6, he walks him. So George Thomas comes off the bench and draws the walk. Decent base runner, not a threat to steal. And here's Petroselli. Rico, two for four today. Clipstein gets the sign from the stretch now. Rico Petroselli is a 5-6. Grounder to short. That's going to be two. Versailles to Allen to Mincher. Double play. So the rally cut short there. Side retired. However, Boston ties it up on the Joe Foy home run. And we go to the bottom of the eighth in a 6-6 six, six ball game. And who's going to come on? You've got righty pitcher, two righties. We've got Sanders and Lonborg available. I'm going to bring in Sanders. They're, they seem pretty even as far as their cards. And hell, if they're gonna trade Sanders to Kansas City, they might as well get some mileage out of him now, right? <laughs> Boy, we may be headed for extra innings, Mike. Okay, it's Batty, the pitcher's spot, and Versailles for the Twins. Sanders getting ready to work. Earl Batty, the catcher, 0 for 3 today. Sanders gets his sign from Tillman now. Here's the windup and the pitch for Batty going to be a 3-8 right-handed comebacker. Sanders has it. Flips to Scott, one down, and now we'll have a pinch hitter. Pinch hitter for Clipstein. That's fine. He was going to come out anyway for Worthington. So two innings for Clipstein. He gave up the home run to Foy, which tied the game. Walked one, struck out a pair. Or is it going to be Worthington? Do they have a lefty? No, but they've got a backwards righty, Pete Semino. I don't even think I've used Semino. Let's take a look. Yeah, he hasn't even been used. Let's get Savino in there. Looks like a pretty good card to me. And he's a backwards righty. They don't have a lefty. So pinch hitting for Minnesota against the righty, Ken Sanders. What do they have? Maybe Rollins. Yeah, we're going to get Rich Rollins in at bat. Rollins has been in one game, and he only had one plate appearance, and he walked. Rollins, a favorite backup third baseman of mine in the ATG teams on Strat 365 online. He's got a nice little cheap 50 cent card that works quite well as a third base backup. 
Anyway, I digress. One down. Here's Rollins, right on right. Sanders is signed. The line that pitch to Rich Rollins, 1-9. It's a tapper down to third base. Foy has it, throws him out, and there's two away. So Rollins retired. And here's Zoilo. Zoilo is 0 for 4 today. Pitch to Zoilo, a 2 6 base hit up the middle. And Zoilo is on with a two out single. Star 15 Steeler, but Sanders a minus three. Tillman a plus three, however, so that's a wash. He'll be held on, making him a 13. And here's Nosick. Nosick entered the game. Pinch hitting for Ulander and singled. Then scored on a leave his home run. So here's Nosick right on right. From the stretch, it's a 2-5, tapper to short. Petroselli has it, throws him out on the run, and that will do it. No runs, a hit, one left on, and we go to the ninth, all tied up at six. You know, there was a big discussion, Franklin and Ben, on that on the MLB network, they think the pitch clock may be uh, increasing pitcher injuries. I kind of think it's this obsession with spin rate, trying to grip the ball so tightly and throw it at high velocity and get the spin rate. Tremendous pressure on the UCL. A lot of stress on the UCL. But it could be a combination of all those things. I don't really know. Okay, we need a new pitcher for Minnesota. And that's Semino. We already decided that. There I go, losing my train of thought again. So here's Semino. He's making his first appearance of the 66 season in the Twins' 16th ball game. And he'll be facing Gosker, Yastrzemski, and Scott in the ninth inning. You know, they did that, Ben, in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Gosker's 0 for 4 today. Pete Semino. You can see what I mean. It's a nice backwards card. Kind of rough against righties. Semino the lined up. Pitch to Goskers, a 1-2, tapper to second base. That's going to be Allen to Mincher, one down. And here comes Yastrzemski. Yeah, it's two for four today. Semino gets the sign. Here's the pitch to Yaz. It's a 5-4. Lefty catcher's card X. That's going to be Batty, a 2-E-2. That's a good catcher. 2-E-2. Two -two. Here's the roll. 16. Pop out to the catcher. Two down. Two X, two away, and here's Scott. Scott, two for four, a homer, and a triple so far today. Samino's going to go ahead and face Scott. Here's the wind-up and the pitch to Scott. It's a 6-11 right-handed. Base hit into right field. Two-out single for Scott, who's three for five today. And that'll bring up Tony C. Tillman and Foy on deck. And here comes Mealy, and that's going to do it. So changes abound here. And here comes Al Worthington now. 
out of the Minnesota pen, their fifth pitcher of the day. Worthington, their real-life save leader with 10. Let's see what he's done in the replay. He's been in six games, one and one, one save, a very high 8.64 ERA. Yeah, I know, Mike, I'm in Captain Hook mode today. I don't know why. Very unlike me. If you missed the start of the broadcast, I mentioned I woke up super high anxiety today, took some medication. I've been like anxiety OCD off the charts today, so maybe that explains some of it. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. So here's Worthington. Runner on first, two down. From the stretch. Tony C is a 2-9 grounder to shortstop. Versailles will go the short way to Allen. And that will retire the side. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. No runs they hit one left on. 6-6. Six to six. And here's Ken Sanders coming out for his second inning of work. Perry says there's a walk-off coming. It's the heart of the order. Oliva, Mincher, and Killebrew. So they've got the right guys up there, that's for sure. As we go to the bottom of the ninth. Tony O. Homered and tripled. Much like Scott on the other side, homered and tripled. Two for four. Sanders into the windup. Pitch to Oliva is a 4-4. Four, four. It's a grounder to shortstop X. That's going to be Petroselli. Petroselli at 2-E-38. Petroselli into the hole now. Here's the play on a 12. Error rating. It's that dreaded 5 on a 38. And he boots it. Error Petroselli. Oliva's aboard. Oh, my goodness. A crucial error. By Petroselli, the first error of the ball game, and Oliva is aboard to lead off the bottom of the ninth. Oliva a star 15, Sanders a minus 3. Tillman, on the other hand, a plus 3. They'll hold him on, making him a 13. And here's Don Mitcher. Mitcher's 1 for 4 today. Nobody throwing in the Boston pen. Sanders from the stretch. The pitch to Don Mincher on a 2-10. He pops him up on the left side. Petroselli, he'll make that one, and there's one out. Oliva held at 13. Here's Harmon Killebrew. Did somebody say Killebrew walk it off? Two for two with a pair of walks. Sanders staring in now, gets the sign, shakes one off, now nodding. Checks his runner from the stretch. The pitch to Harmon Killebrew is a 5'10", flight of left and shallow. Here comes Yastrzemski gliding in to put that one away, two down. And it'll be up to Bernie Allen. Allen's two for four. He has a triple. Sanders from the stretch. Pitch to Bernie Allen is a 2-7. Struck him out, and we're going to extra innings. Third day in a row. How about that? Third extra inning game in a row. I'll have to get a drink of water here. My, my coffee's all gone. The 
It's going to be Tillman, Foy, and Smith for Boston in the 10th inning. Worthington ready to work now. Tillman standing in from the right side. He's one for four. And here comes the pitch to Tillman. That's going to be a 5-7 right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. Tillman down on strikes. And here comes Joe Foy. All Foy has done today is singled, doubled twice, and tied the game with a dramatic eighth inning home run. Foy, the right-handed hitter, Worthington the side, the windup. The pitch to Foy is a 1-5. Base hit up the middle, and Foy is 5-for-5. Five five. Holy cow, I don't care what happens. He's the player of the game. Not a threat to run. And the batter will be George Smith. Smith over, over two with a walk and a sack fly. Worthington staring in for the sign, now working out of the stretch. Here's the pitch to George Smith. It's a 1-10 righty, grounder to second base. Allen's only play is to first. And Foy will take second on the play. So the winning run or the go-ahead run, I should say, is in scoring position, and here comes the pitcher, Sanders. So we'll have another pinch hitter. Sanders worked two innings. One hit, no runs. No walks and a strikeout. Yeah, these benches are getting thin now. Lenny Green will be the batter. Only left-handed hitter left on the bench. Green comes into the game just 182, 6 for 33, no homers, four runs batted in. Runner in scoring position, two down, and here's the pitch from Worthington. Green, 3-10, a fly to left field. That's going to be playable for Nasek, who makes the catch, and we're going to the bottom of the 10th. No runs a hit, one left on. And we're going to need a new pitcher now for the Red Sox. That's going to be Lonborg. You know, ever since I got these new score sheets, <laughs> there were the old score sheets. It's all over here. You've only got three slots for each team. You got six total pitcher slots. Now you got 12, six for each team. This is the first time I've used it up. Sixth pitcher of the day for Boston. What's Lonborg done on the replay? Starter reliever. He's made three relief appearances and two starts. He's one and one with a 4.84. 22 innings of work. And yes, Lonborg and Cy Young in 67. And what's really weird is nobody's knocked on the door. Been at it for over an hour and a half now. So now I'm starting to think I will not be getting maintenance today, and that's fine. Bottom of the order for the Twins. It's Tovar, Batty, and, of course, the pitcher's spot. Let's see if we can use every player on these teams, huh? <laughs> Here's Tovar. He's 0 for 3. Lonborg ready to work now. Here's the windup. And the pitch to Caesar. It's 6 11 righty. That's a base hit into left field. Lead off single for Tovar, and he's got wheels. 
Star 17, 1 through 15 runner. Lomborg a minus 2. Tillman again with that horrible plus 3, however. So he's an 18. Held on, he'll be a 16. And that's too much to resist. He's going to try for the lead. 2 through 5. For a 16. He's got it. 1 to 16. The pitch to Batty. There goes Tovar. Tillman's throw. He's stolen it. Clutch stolen base for Caesar Tovar. The first steal of the ball game. And the winning run is in scoring position with nobody out. Here comes team captain Earl Batty. Earl's 0 for 4 today. Boy, he'd love to make up for that now. Conference at the mound, Tillman and Lonborg. Lonborg saying, I don't know what you're doing out of here because if you could throw, I wouldn't be in this predicament. <laughs> I've got the hole and I'm doing my part. Oh, got it. There's the, there's the uh, maintenance. I'm going to have to postpone just for a minute here.
Okay, still with me? We are back. It was not the maintenance guy, it was the cable guy. So we've got all kinds of things going on here today. Here's the situation. We're in the bottom of the 10th inning. Caesar Tovar singled and stole second. Earl Batty at the plate with nobody out. Jim Lonborg gets the sign from Bob Tillman now, and here's the pitch. That's going to be a 4-8 right hand. A single to 8 on a 1. That's down for a base hit with one star. Tovar is going to have to hold up at third. And there are runners at the corners with nobody out. The runner on third, of course, the winning run. And it's, it's got some speed in Tovar. 1 through 15 runner. Boston will be pulling the infield in, and Minnesota will send up a pinch hitter for Al Worthington, the pitcher. The bench is pretty thin here. They do have two catchers on the bench. Normally, I don't like to leave a team without a last catcher, but they're going to use Jerry Zimmerman to pinch hit here. So Jerry Zimmerman coming off the bench, 6-6 six, six ball game in the bottom of the 10th. Twins threatening to walk it off. And here's Zimmerman. Zimmerman so far on the replay has not played much. He's just 4 for 15 on the season. No home runs, two runs batted in. Infield in, Lonbor gets the sign. Here's the pitch to Zimmerman. That's going to be a 3-3 flight of left field, but that's a B question mark. That's Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski makes the catch. Tovar can tag. 15 plus 2, 17. Yaz with a minus 3 arm. That makes it a 14. He's tagging. Here he comes. The throw from Yastrzemski. 15. He's out at the plate. Oh, my God. What a throw by Carl Yastrzemski to keep the Red Sox alive. Tovar tagged and was gunned down at the plate. And that's the first out of the inning. Holy crap. Zimmerman, a fly ball to fairly shallow left. Tovar with speed attempted to score anyway. Pretty good odds of scoring there. But Yastrzemski, a perfect one-hop throw to the plate. And Tovar was cut down. And the batter will be Zoilo Versailles now. Lonborg getting a new ball, rubbing it up. Here's the sign from Tillman. From the strip, pitch to Zoilo is a 4-9 right-handed. That is a double to 10 on a 15. That's going to be down for a single with two stars. There goes Batty rounding, and he is into third. And once again... The game-winning run is at third base, this time with one out. So a huge single by Zoilo. Remember, Zoilo is 0 for 4. Singled in the 8th, now singled in the 10th. He's 2 for 6. Zoilo, a star 15 stealer. He will have to be held on, minus 2 plus 3. That's going to be... Where is he? That's going to be... 15, 16, 14 held. But the real story is the runner on third base. He's not going to try to steal here. Nosek will hit away. Joe Nosek, one for two today. Came on to pinch hit for Ulander in the seventh. Infield in, one out. Lonborg gets the side. Pitch to Joe Nosek on a 4-7, and he walks him to load the bases. Holy crap. Versailles takes second, and here comes Tony Oliva. And the Twins would not even be in this position were it not for Tony Oliva's two-run homer in the seventh. And now he comes up with the bases loaded and one down. Twins threatening to walk it off again. Yes, there are two outs. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ben. So with the bases loaded, infield back, no runner held, two down, and here's Oliva. Oliva, two for five, a triple and a home run. He's driven in three already in this ball game. Lonbor gets the start. To Tony Oliva, 2-5. Grounder to first. Scott has it. He'll take it to the bag himself. And we're going to the 11th inning. 
Holy cow, three hits in the inning, but they're unable to push one across. And through 10, it is 6-6. Six, six. And now, of course, what else? We need another pitcher for Minnesota. Worthington worked one and a third. Gave up one hit. No walks, a strikeout, no runs. And the Twins are down to their last pitcher. Or they'll have to bring a starter in. Dwight Seaborg is all they have left. He's coming on. Seaborg, Minnesota. That's going to call for a double switch just in case. Okay. So I'm taking, I took that out, but I just put a barrel there. So it should work a lot better for you. All right. No charge, though, for anything, okay? Well, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good day. You too. What a game. Yes, what a scorecard, Kevin. And welcome, Kevin, by the way. Oh, man, I really was hoping Oliva was going to walk it off. Because you know what's going to happen now. The maintenance guy is going to knock on the door next. That was not maintenance. That was cable for the Internet. Although the Internet's been fine since this morning. It was really weirding out on me this morning. We're going to do a double switch here. We're going to take uh, Nosek out and put the pitcher in this spot. This is going to be a mess. Okay, that's the pitcher now. Gnostic spot will be the pitcher. A new left fielder will be Bob Allison, 3E10. I only do this because that's the last pitcher the Twins have. So if this goes much longer, they're going to be into... I don't know where they're going to be. <laughs> we may have to have Franklin Long come in and pitch. For now, it'll be Siebler. Siebler, the right-hander, he's only been in one game, one inning, a nine earned run average, and he'll be facing the top of the Boston order. Let's make sure we can see these cards here now. Okay, that looks pretty good. I know, right, Perry? I have to enter this damn thing manually into the window escape. Okay, it's Petroselli to lead off the 11th. Rico is two for five. Siebler, the sign from Earl Batty now. Here's the windup to Rico Petroselli on a 3 7. It's a base hit up the middle, and Petroselli's aboard. And that will bring up Gosker, the left fielder. Jim Gosker is 0 for 5. Petroselli running wise, not a threat to run. Gosker, left handed batter.
Seaver from the stretch. The pitch to Gosker on a 5-9. Swung on and missed. Strike three. And down goes Gosker. Long day for Jim Gosker. And here comes Yaz. Yeah, I don't think we have any... Right, man, we don't have any more position players left than we do pitchers, really. These starters could handle it if it comes to that. They could handle the workload in those days. Here's Jastrzemski now, two for five. Runner on first takes his lead from the stretch. Siebler's pitch, a 6-5. Fly ball to left field. That's going to be playable for now Allison, who makes the catch for the out. Two away, and here is Scott. Scott, three hits today. Homer, triple, and a single. Man, wouldn't that be something? Needs a double for the cycle from the stretch. Siebler's pitch on a 6-4 is a fly to center field X. That is going to be Tovar, a 3-E-2. Tovar on his horse. Here's the play on a 14. He makes the catch, a nice running catch by Tovar. Wouldn't that be something if that would have fell in for a double off the X chart? Scott would have got the cycle. No runs to hit, one left on. We go to the bottom of the 11th in a 6-6 six, six tie. Lonborg coming out for his second inning of work. <laughs> ben says, that don't worry, he'll be back up for the 13th. Mincher, Killebrew, and Allen do for the Twins. I'm still shaking my head over that opportunity they had. You had to send Tovar then, don't you think? I really thought that was going to be it. Mincher, one for five. To lead things off, left-handed hitter Lonborg gets the sign from Tillman. Here's the pitch now on a 4-8 left-handed. That's a base hit into right field, and Mincher's aboard with a leadoff single. Lonborg minus two, Tillman plus three. That's a 14, but he's not an asterisk, so they're not going to hold him on. And the Twins are not going to risk taking the bat out of the hands of Harmon Killebrew. Killebrew, two for three with a pair of walks today. And here comes the pitch from Longwood. It's a 3-12 to Killebrew, and he draws the walk, ball four. And that pushes the winning run into scoring position. Mincher, not a good runner, but I mean, seriously, do we have... Valdespino could run, but he can't play first base. It is what it is at this point. Mincher at second, Killebrew at first. Nobody out. Bernie Allen up. He's a D butter, in case you're wondering. Tovar and Batty do up. Lonborg gets the sign, and Allen's going to lay it down, even though he's a D. And it's a 12. And he pops into the double play. Leading runner is out. So Allen trying to lay it down. That's going to go 2-5 on the sack. Other runners hold. Leading runner out, other runners hold. And the Twins just can't get a break. 
And here's Tovar. One for four. Runner at first, two down. Longboard with the pitch. It's a 4 6 right handed. Swung on and missed strike three, and we're going to the 12th. Holy cow. To the 12th we go in a 6-6 ball game. What a game. Holy crap. Tony C, Tillman, and Foy due for the Red Sox. For Siebler entering his second inning of work. Tony Conigliaro, one for five. Siebler gets his side now. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a 4-10 right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three, and down goes Tony. Up to bat, Bob Tillman. Tillman, the right-handed hitting catcher, one for five today. Seaborder gets the saw. Pitch to Tillman is a 2-7 right-handed fly ball to center field. Playable for Tovar. Drifts over a bit and handles it for the second out. Two out, nobody on, and guess who's coming up? Joe Foy. All he's done today is go five for five. Two singles, two doubles, a game-tying home run in the eighth. Can he do it again? Siebler, the sign from Batty. Here's the pitch to Foy on a 3-12. Tapper to second base. That's Allen to Mincher. And they finally get Foy out. 1-2-3. Go the Red Sox in the 12th. And we go to the bottom of the 12th. Oh, my goodness. For Lonborg, his... Third inning of work, rated four for relief. On the other hand, he's due to bat second in the 13th. It's going to be Batty, Allison, remember, and Versailles. And it just there you go, just like clockwork. Now it's probably the maintenance guy. All right, I'll be right back, guys.
All right, so now we've had maintenance. This game's got a little bit of everything. We've got 12 innings. We had the cable guy. We've had the maintenance guy. So where are we? We're in the bottom of the 12th in a tie ball game. I may, I may need that, Ben. Or it may be microwave meal by the time I get done with this. Mind you, I did not even have lunch today. So there's another factor. It's been quite an interesting day, to say the least. Here's Earl Batty to lead things off. Bob Allison on deck. He came in in that double switch, thankfully for Siebler. And the, uh, <laughs> the Minnesota pen. Batty, one for five. Long ball gets the side. It's going to be a three-five. Grounder to shortstop. Petroselli has it. Over to Scott, and there's one out. And here's Bob Allison now. Allison, powerful hitter against lefties. Not much going on there against righties. Here he is with one down. Pitch from Lonborg, a 4-4. It's a grounder to third base X. That's going to be Foy, a 4-E-25. Hold your breath on this one. Here's the play at third base. It's an 18, and he makes the play and throws him out. Nice play, Foy. Boy, Foy has been the man today. Five hits, a couple of nice plays. Two down, and here's Versailles. Versailles, two for six. Longmore gets the sign. There's the pitch to Zoilo on a 2-8. Pops him up on the left side. That's Petroselli. And we're going to the 13th. And I'm going to split this in half, just uh, looking ahead a little bit. And we'll put the 13th here. Let's see if we can see this now. Looks like we can barely. Oh, now I'll have to slide the camera over. Well, I'll figure something out. All right. To the 13th we go. I had a 14 inning once in this replay already. It's going to be George Smith leading off the 13th for the Red Sox. Smith today, 0 for 3, walked in a sack fly. Siebler gets the sign from Batty now. Here's the pitch to Smith on a 4-9. It's a high fly ball to left field, but that's going to hold up. The wind's holding it up as Allison backs up and makes the catch. 4-9, homer to 8. The roll, <coughs> excuse me, the roll is a 20. And now here's the pitcher. Oh, my goodness. Boston has some pitchers left. Do they have anybody to bat? Does it make sense even to take Lonborg out? Do well, Nasek Oliva Mincher. Yeah, it kind of does. Okay, the only choice they really have is Eddie Casco, and that's what we're going to do here. Eddie Casco is going to pitch it. Boy, everybody plays today. 
So here's Casco with one out. Dennis Bennett getting loose in the Boston pen. Lawnborg worked three. And here's Casco with one down. Siebler versus Casco. You know what? I'm going to move that over here. Casco, the right handed batter. He comes into the ball game at 261, 6 for 23. He does have a home run. Siebler, pitch to Casco, 5 9 right handed, swung on and missed strike three. And down goes Casco. There's two away. And here's Rico Petroselli now. Petroselli, three hits on the ball game. Single his last time up. Two down in the 13th. The windup. The pitch to Rico on a 1 5. Swung on and missed. Strike three. 1 2 3 for Siebler. And we're going to the bottom of the 13th. And here comes Bennett. Remember, the pitcher is now in the two spot in the order. He'd be leading off the inning. This is really a nightmare. Let me check the twin starters. Cots due to pitch tomorrow. Remember, it's going to be a double header, too. Let's see what else we could bring in for them in terms of uh, computer-only cards. I could bring in Jim Allum, computer-only card. Okay, that's what we're going to do. The question is, what do they have to pinch hit with? Andy Costco. So here's Andy Costco, pinch hitting for the pitcher to lead off the bottom of the 13th. Bennett gets the sign now. Here's the pitch to Costco on a 3-8. It's a base hit into center field, and Costco's aboard to lead things off. Costco cannot run. Let's see if the Twins have a pitcher who can run. It would have to be a starting pitcher who's not going to be pitching in this game, obviously. Boswell's a 14. Mudcat Grant's a 14. That's what they're going to do here. Mudcat Grant on a 1 through 14 is going to run for Costco. Holy cow.
In the meantime, I made myself a one cup because I needed something. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. And look who's coming up. Tony Oliva. Left on left now as Bennett gets the sign. From the stretch, it's a 2-7 fly ball to center and playable. That's going to be uh, Geiger, Gosker to make the catch. That's the first out. Here's Mincher now. Mincher has a pair of singles on the day. Left on left. Bennett gets the sign. From the stretch, it's a 1-8. Swung on and missed strike three. And down goes Mincher. Holy cow. And here comes Harmon Killebrew. Two singles, he's walked twice. He's been on base five of six times today. He's got the power. Can Killebrew walk it off? Somebody said Killebrew walk off. That was like three bats ago. <laughs> okay, here's Killebrew. Runner on first, two down. Bennett from the third. Pitch to Harmon, four, seven. Fly ball to center field. Hanging up for Gosker. And we're going to the 14th. Is somebody going to break this tie? I'm going to regret writing that there. I can tell you that right now. <clears throat> okay, so they batted for Siebler. That means it's Jim Allum. Left-hander coming on. And I'm going to have to read this off of my computer screen. Jim Allum, if you're wondering, worked 10 innings that year with a 3.60 ERA in real life. Left-handed pitcher. Gosker to lead things off, left on left. Here's the windup, here's the pitch. A 6 8 is the fly ball to left field. That's going to be playable. That's Bob Allison to make the play. And here's Yastrzemski. All of them. Pitch to Yaz. 2 6 is a comebacker. Allum has it over to Mincher. And there's two down quickly in the 14th. And here he comes, George Scott. Scott gets another. Hey, you predict, who predicted that? Don't worry, he'll get another at bat in the 13th. Well, actually the 14th, but he does get another at bat. Scott, a homer, a triple, and a single today. Two out, nobody on. Here's the pitch on a 2-7 fly ball to left field. That is going to hang up there for Allison. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for all of them. This Allum card, in all honesty, is not very realistic. But we'll see what happens. Okay, bottom of the 14th, it's Bennett. His second inning of work. Allen, to lead things off, he's got a pair of hits on the day. Here's Bernie Allen, Bennett. Left on left. Pitch to Bernie. 1-4. Fly ball to left field. That's Yastrzemski. He's under it. 
And that's out number one. And here's Caesar Tovar once again. Seems like he was just up. Bennett gets the sign. Pitch to toe bar, a 6-7 swung on and missed strike three. And down goes Tovar. Second strikeout in a row, two down, it's up to Earl Batty. Batty's had a rough day. He's one for six. <laughs> Bennett into the windup. Here's the pitch to Batty on a 4-6. Tapper down to third base. That's going to be Foy throwing him out. And we are headed to the 15th. And that's a new high for me in this replay. What is wrong with this thing now? Well, of course, why not? Why wouldn't that break now, you know? We wouldn't have it any other way. I'll let all of them go one more. Canigliaro. He came in there. Wouldn't hurt to write him in, you know. Siebler worked three. Ben needs another Leiden Kugels. I forgot all about that. Canigliaro will lead it off. Bennett entering his second inning of work. Tony C is one for six today. Bennett into the windup now. Here's the pitch to Canigliaro on a 5 2, and he walks him. So a leadoff walk to Canigliaro. Not much decent runner, no threat to steal. One through 13 runner. Here's Bob Tillman, the catcher. Tillman one for six. Runner on first, takes his lead. Bennett working from the stretch. Takes to Tillman, that's a three, seven. Ball four, he walks him. And Bennett appears to be running out of gas. Out to the mound. No, I'm sorry, that's all of them. Oh crap, see, there I go again. Three, seven, lefty. What was the roll before that? That was Canigliaro. Is that on his card? Sorry, guys. Checking the Canigliaro roll now. This is all I'm pitching. Okay, Steve, roll the dice. <laughs> Replay review here. I had the 
looking at the wrong pitcher's card. I picked Bennett's card up and then put it back down. Okay, the 5-2 was a, was a right-handed fly ball out for Kendigliaro, so that changes the scope of that. I beg your pardon. It's, it's been a long one. Fly ball to center. Give him an honorary homer. Yeah. So it's a one-out walk to Tillman. And here's Foy again. Foy five for six on the day. All him staring in. The pitch to Foy. Five, four, fly to center and playable. Once again, that is Tovar. And he makes the catch two down. And here's George Smith. Allen gets the sign. Here's the pitch to Smith. It's a 3-6 comebacker. Allen has it, throws him out. And that will do it for the Sox in the 15th. Bennett, for Bennett, this will be his third inning of work. Bob Allison to lead things off for the Twins. Allison, much better numbers against left-handed pitching. Bennett now gets the sign from Tillman. Here's the windup. The pitch to Bob Allison is a 4-9. Grounder to shortstop X. That's going to be Petroselli, a 2-E-38. Here's the roll on the play as Rico drifts into the hole. That is not a flat one, so that's a re-roll. That's going to be a 13 on a 2. He makes the play for the out. So 6-3-X. Allison is retired, and here's Zoilo. Busting out the new whiteout because this one's that one's about on my last nerve. One down, and here's Zoilo Bennett into the whiteout. Pitch to Zoilo on a one three, and he hits him. <laughs> I'm looking for the freaking one. Why wouldn't we have that? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness, I'm getting punchy here. Two and a half hours into this stream with a couple of interruptions. Zoilo's got speed. He's a star 15. Bennett a one. Of course, Tillman's terrible, four. So 19 held on. He's a 17. The problem is eight and nine. He's automatically caught. Now we'll have a pinch hitter for all of them. Grant ran. Jim Perry's throwing. He's going to come in fatigued or whatever. I don't care at this point. Okay. Val Despino will bat for the Twins. His name's so long, I gotta put it up there. Sandy Velt, no, that's not a good, hey, 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 wait a minute. Well, they don't have anybody. It's the him or Russ Nixon, he's the last catcher. Well, hell, you'd be better off to let, yeah, we're gonna use Val Despino. Here's Val Despino now, left on left. 
pitch from Bennett on a 4 or 5, a ground ball to second base. Smith to Scott. Actually, it's Smith to Petroselli to Scott. That's a double play. And that ends the 15th. We are seriously out of players. Here comes Jim Perry. Perry, the eighth <laughs> Minnesota pitcher of the day. And, of course, Dennis Bennett is due to lead it off. And all they have to hit is Ryan, the last catcher. Bennett's a 6 and left-handed batter. I'll tell you what, he's going to bat. We're down to desperate times here, gentlemen. Whoops. So Bennett will bat. Oh, I see what I didn't do. Sixteen. Okay, Bennett, once again. Left-handed batter, six with N power, however. Boy, wouldn't that be something. The pitch to him is a three-six. Struck him out. So Bennett fans, and here's Rico Petroselli. Perry gets the sign, and here's the pitch to Petroselli. It's going to be a 2-11 base hit into left field. Rico's aboard with a single. A one-out single by Rico Petroselli. And here comes Gosker. Perry working out of the stretch now. Here's the pitch to Jim Gosker. That's going to be a 6-8. Ball four, he loses him. Oh, my, a huge walk there. Forces the go-ahead run into scoring position. And here comes Carl Yastrzemski. What's Yaz done on the day? He's two for two for seven. Perry staring in to get the sun. Here's the pitch now to Yaz on a five-seven. That's ripped into the gap for extra bases. Here he comes. Here comes Petroselli to cross the plate, and Gosker will hold up at third. It's an RBI double for Carl Yastrzemski. And here's George Scott. Runners at second and third one down. Uh, Minnesota will pull the infield in. Perry gets the sign. Pitch to George Scott on a 312. That's going to be a fly ball to left field B question mark. That's a seven. That means that Gosker can tag up 14 16. To left is Allison. Allison in left now, remember. He's a zero. 14, 16. He's tagging. Here he comes to 16, and he's thrown out at the plate. <laughs> oh, my goodness.
But Boston does get a run. Now can they hold it? Okay, that was Scott. Bennett entering his fourth inning. They've got Oliva Mincher Killebrew. The Sox have Dick Radatz left in the pen. Do they dare bring him in? He'd be their last reliever. He was their save leader. Tony Oliva to lead things off. Bennett's going to at least start the inning. Left on left here. Here's the pitch to Tony O on a 1 8. It's a base hit up the middle, and Oliva's aboard with the tying run. And here we go. Yeah, they may need. Oh boy, I say we got to go with the pitchers we got right now. Here's Don Mitcher. Let's check Oliva's run. He's a stealing. He's a star of 15. Bennett a plus one. Tillman a four. That's going to be 19 held to 17. He's going to try for the lead. Three through six for the 17. He's got it. Here he goes. One to 17. The throw. He's stolen it. Stolen base. Oliva. The tying run is in scoring position with nobody out. Huge stolen base by Tony Oliva. He gambled there and got himself into scoring position. Let me refresh this now. <laughs> That's funny, Ben. Here's Mincher now. Runner on second. Nobody out. Left on right. Pitch to Mincher, a 6-8 high fly ball to left field, but the wind's going to hold that one up as well. And Yastrzemski makes the catch. So 6-8, homer, 1. Mincher does have the power, by the way. Roll on a 19, and here's Harmon Killebrew with Bernie Allen on deck. Momentary thoughts of putting Killebrew on and trying for the double play, but you don't walk the winning run, especially not in a game like this. So it's Bennett versus Killebrew. The wind up on the pitch to Harmon on a 4-6. It's a grounder to third base. That's Foy again. Throws him out, and there's two down. Runner holds. And it'll be up to Bernie Allen. Left on left now. Bennett, the windup. The pitch to Allen on a 3 8. It's a grounder to second base. Smith has it cleanly to Scott. And we're going to the 17th inning. No, that's the. What am I saying? That's the ball game. <laughs> I'm tired. Sorry, guys. That's the ball game. That's the third out. Seven to six, the final. Bennett picks up the win. Jim Perry takes the loss in relief.
And in 16 innings, the Red Sox edge the Twins 7-6. to six. And you know, I skipped, I can forget about lunch. I already skipped that. We're just going to move right into dinner time here in Spokane. <laughs> Some of you diehards <laughs> hung in here the whole way despite two interruptions. I cannot tell you my level of appreciation to your commitment. That's it. I'm going to, I'm going to let the Windows game total up the particulars when I enter this manually, and believe me, I'm going to have to do that very carefully. That must have been the game of the week. Somebody said that earlier. Oh my goodness, what a game. I got to say, I'm punchy, and I started the day punchy. Okay, so what else is new? I mean, it's this this just figures that this whole frickin' day from the time I woke up has been weird. So of course we would have a 16 any game today. Well, what was I thinking? Tomorrow, 1.30 Pacific, it's going to be the Chicago Cubs at the New York Mets. That will be er Ernie Brolio. For the Cubs, and Tug McGraw is going to get the start for the Mets. Yeah, Tug McGraw is a starting pitcher. How about that? Right, Ben, it looked like it was just going to be a freaking hammer fest, the whole thing. And then, boom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scoreless innings. Who'd have thunk? That's baseball, and that's Stratomatic, and that's all for me. I want to thank you guys again. Hit that like button for me. God, I appreciate you guys. Spokane Steve. I'm about ready to lose the battery on the phone, too. So there we go. Spokane Steve, wishing you all a great night. Thanks, guys.